This is why OPEC has gone to great lengths over the past quarter of a century to encourage dialogue and cooperation in the industry. The International Energy Forum is a good example of this. OPEC played a big part in setting up this high-level producer-consumer body, and indeed, its headquarters are located in one of our member countries, Saudi Arabia. The USA was one of the 86 countries that signed the IEF new charter in Riyadh two months ago. OPEC engages in frequent dialogue with other leading stakeholders, such as the International Energy Agency, the United Nations, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank, as well as the European Union, Russia, and China. It also plays an active role in the G20 with regard to energy matters. Let us now turn to some topical issues affecting the oil market. I need hardly tell anyone here in the U.S. that the biggest area of concern at the moment is the return to high level of oil price volatility this winter. This has seen the price of OPEC's reference basket rise by around 40% since October, after a long period of relatively high stability in a well-balanced market, a situation that was widely recognized by producers and by consumers alike. At first, this was put down to a combination of factors, notably the early onset of winter weather forecasts predicting a quicker than expected rise in crude oil demand, a surge of investment in flows into commodity markets, including crude oil, and so on. Most recently, however, the situation has escalated with the political developments in parts of North Africa and the Middle East, and the associated risk premium has pushed oil prices to the highest level since the onset of the financial crisis in 2008. Accordingly, speculator activity on the NYMEX crude oil futures market surged to record highs earlier this month. However, in the physical market, supply and demand fundamentals do not support such a rise in prices. Stock levels point to a continued well-supplied global market, helped by the high level of commercial oil inventories built up during the recent financial crisis. Strategic petroleum volumes are also high within OECD and some emerging economies. Also due to ongoing long-term investments by our member countries, OPEC spare capacity has reached almost 6 million barrels per day over the past year, providing an adequate cushion to the market in the case of any supply disruptions. This can be made available to markets quickly, and there are reports that this is starting to happen as we speak in response to the recent geopolitical developments. Some people are worried about their return to the dramatic price rises in 2008. However, there is no ground for such fears. The situation then was very different to, to, to that of today's. Three years ago, the market was still reacting to a demand surge that had begun earlier in the decade and had revealed inadequate investment in new capacity years before. Even though throughout the, mar the, ma throughout, the market always had enough crude, there was nevertheless the impression of a tight market. This was despite OPEC's repeated assurances that the short to medium term was well covered by our member countries' investments in new capacity. Also, downstream refinery constraints were adding to the upward pressure on oil prices in general. During that year, too, the pressures affecting the international financial sector were reaching a breaking point, justifying the warnings we had been making in OPEC since the middle of the decade about the damaging impact of that poorly regulated sector on oil prices. Quite clearly, we have moved on from 2008, and there is a different set of factors affecting the oil market today. Indeed, despite the recent unrest, the world economy continues to enjoy a solid recovery, even though uncertainties remain that could reduce the, moment, the current momentum. These include 
the oil price surge lasting a long time, the Eurozone's sovereign debt crisis, rising inflation, and the overheating in emerging economies. Nevertheless, the overall picture for the oil market in 2011 is a positive one. With the end of the winter season, the oil market is now heading towards a period of low demand as well as the maintenance season downstream. There should normally be no pressure in the physical oil market. Notwithstanding all of this, more needs to be done to circumvent the use of oil by the financial sector as a major asset class. This fact, the fact that the paper market has greatly increased its role in price discovery in recent years means that this function has been shifted away steadily from physical supply and demand fundamentals. This reduces the room for maneuver OPEC has in tackling price volatility, even though our organization is always ready to adapt to changing circumstances in the interest of market stability. Our decision in the extreme market conditions of December 2008 to reduce oil supply by around 15% from September levels to redress the balance in the market was widely recognized as being highly effective in first putting a floor under the collapsing oil prices and then supporting them as they rose to reasonable, sustainable levels. But even though it remains valid today, its effectiveness has been overtaken by the recent dramatic turn of events, although this may be just a temporary phenomenon. We are watching the situation very carefully at the present time, and our ministers are ready to act in the interest of stability should market conditions warrant this. Indeed, monitoring oil market developments is an ongoing activity in our secretariat in Vienna, and we ex extend this process well into the future with extensive research, scenario building, and other such activities. This is essential for an industry with high capital outlays and long investment lead times. Only last October, OPEC adopted its latest long-term strategy which again emphasized that market stability remains OPEC's underlying ethos. It identified key issues for OPEC's attention, and these include global economic developments, oil as an asset class, oil prices, energy and environmental policies, technological developments, world liquid supply, and investments in the face of supply and demand uncertainties. Our latest reference case shows world energy use rising by more than 40% by 2030. As economies expand, the global population grows and living conditions across the world improve. Developing countries will account for most of the demand increase. This is not only due to large population and future higher economic growth, but also because of the huge pent up demand for energy use in these countries as people gradually gain access to modern energy services. Fossil fuels will pay, play the major role, and with their share of the energy mix remaining above 80% throughout this period, although it will dip slightly. Renewables will grow fast, but from a low base, while both hydropower and nuclear power will, will witness some expansion. In the case of nuclear power, let me first express our, on, on behalf of OPEC, our deepest condolences to the government and people of Japan for the trauma and the loss of life they are experiencing as a result of the recent earthquake, tsunami, and the damaged nuclear installations in the northeast of the country. The disaster has reopened debate across the world on the future role of nuclear power, especially with regard to safety issues, and this may affect future energy mix projections. Returning to our present reference case scenario, 
oil's share of the energy mix will drop by around 5% to 30%. Even so, liquid fuel demand is projected to rise nearly 20% to 106 million barrels per day by 2030, with the transportation sector remaining the main source of growth. The world has plenty of oil to support this demand from both conventional and non-conventional sources. This is especially the case within OPEC, where the strong resource base means that member countries are well able to meet the projected rise in demand for their crude to, to 39 million barrels per day by 2030. But before committing large sums to investments, they need a fair guarantee that consumers will want their oil when the new capacity is in place. To illustrate this, OPEC has produced optimistic higher growth and pessimistic lower growth scenarios. The former sees demand rising by more than 14 million barrels per day by 2030, and the latter looks at essentially flat demand. In monetary terms, this results in a huge uncertainty gap of around $230 billion for upstream investments in our member countries. While some types of uncertainty are difficult to tackle, such as economic growth and technology, concrete measures can be taken when it comes to policymaking. Here I refer to the discriminatory nature of, of consumer countries' policies aimed at reducing oil demand subsidizing alternatives or taxing oil use heavily, unrealistic policy targets, and sending confusing signals to investors. This is why OPEC repeatedly asks consumer governments to recognize in their policy making the reasonable investment needs of oil producers. Consumers themselves will benefit from this too because it will improve security of supply. A related issue that needs addressing urgently is the human resource skills base. If the industry is to meet the growing number of challenging facing it in the future, this is to a great extent a long-term matter and means making the industry more attractive to prospective graduates and employees from across the world and once they have joined our ranks, keeping them there. Ladies and gentlemen, I have spoken at length about OPEC at 50. This only serves to show how much the organization has achieved over the past half a century. Not only has it grown immeasurably from a small group of developing countries defending their legitimate, legitimate interests in the oil industry, but it has also diversified its activities well beyond what anyone could have imagined in September 1960. It is now widely recognized as a mature organization, well-versed in the ways of both the oil sector and the energy industry at large, and an integral part of global dialogue on these and associated multilateral issues, such as sustainable development and environmental protection. One of the secrets of OPEC's success over the years has been its focus on the future especially with regard to ensuring order and stability in the international oil market so that producers and consumers alike benefit the world over. OPEC remains committed to addressing these enduring challenges. This is the first key message I should like to leave you with. Secondly, we have been witnessing a major structural change in the market in recent years with oil becoming a financial asset class. This has greatly increased volatility and has been, de been detrimental to OPEC's efforts to achieve market stability. At the moment, the market is well supplied with crude oil and OPEC has plenty of spare production capacity to handle any shortages should they arise. Thirdly, addressing the challenges facing us in the energy industry today, these must be seen as going hand in hand with other broader based concerns affecting mankind, notably sustainable development, environmental protection, and the eradication of poverty. 